presented by Church Tech U. It's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, how to route audio from the inspector to a different audio output on your computer. Hi, and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I tell you all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. So, one of the things that you might run into is you might have to do either a last minute edit or maybe you don't want to send uh, audio out to the house, you know, your congregation or what have you, from a video that maybe you're clipping the beginning and end on or something like that. Maybe you're tweaking it, you need to hear the audio. But that audio can come out of uh, a laptop, that audio can come out of an iMac, etc. Maybe it can even come out of headphones uh, connected to a different uh, audio output on that computer while you tweak that so that it doesn't come out into the house. So how do you go about doing that in ProPresenter? Well, in Pro 7.2, it's really not all that hard. So let's head over to my computer and we'll take a look. So in a previous lesson, I talked all about sending audio just for recording or live and or live streaming straight on out. So audio comes into the computer and it goes right back out for recording or live streaming purposes. For the inspector, it's a little bit different. So first off, we're going to go into ProPresenter Preferences up here. And um, we need to go into the Audio tab. Now, before I only had two ProPresenter audio channels. Um, and so now I'm going to use four, actually. So let's do that. One, two, three, four. Notice when I added... Um, the third channel, we got audio meters over here, so four. Okay, so now my audio meters are over here, channel one and two, channel three and four audio show up here. Now, what I want is I want to route the audio from the inspector, and so that's this section right here, to the audio um, to the audio output device that only I can hear here at my desk. So how would I do that? Well, first off, I decide what device that is. In this case, I've got audio coming into my Griffin iMic USB audio system, but I'm also going to send audio back out and that's only the audio that is in the inspector. So I can do that. I do have other choices here. I could send it to uh, whatever I have selected down here. Maybe by default that's what you want. That's not what we're talking about today. System setting, whatever the system has set up. Um, these are two HDMI outputs. I could send it there. This is what I'm going to do. I could send it to my MacBook Pro speakers since we're doing this on a MacBook Pro. Uh, either way. So just whatever I would prefer. So I select that. I can adjust the level here. Um, and that is separate from the system audio, which... Uh, you can't actually see because this is a secondary um, output. But what I really need to do is go into routing here. And so what I'm saying, what I'm doing is I've got to decide what channels, what pro presenter audio routing channels do I want to send to this iMic. So before... Uh, in a previous tutorial, I sent channels 1 and 2 to um, the recording. So let's disable those. And what I'm going to do is send channel 3 and 4 to this device. Device channel 1 and 2, which is the iMic here. 
A um, couple of things I want to show you here. I have a test tone, so while I'm setting this up, if I want to test to make sure that I've got the correct device selected, I can click the tone for each of those. Um, I can uh, mute either one of those channels, so if it's coming in one and I'm not quite sure which one, I could mute the other. And here on the ProPresenter channels, I have an additional option in addition to sending a test tone for just channel 4 if I want, or just muting channel 4, I can also solo channel 4. So that basically, uh, in effect, mutes all the other channels, and I am only listening to channel 4 if I were to collect that, um, click that rather. So I can mute the whole shebang, I can uh, clear the solo, and I could set it to automatic, which does like that. That's not what I wanted. Uh, or I could clear it all. That clears everything to give me a fresh start. Not a big deal when you're only dealing with a couple of channels. But if you had, say, an X32 plugged in with USB or virtual sound card, it could be something that saves you a ton of time right when you need it. So keep that in mind. Um, so there we are right there. So, what that does is, let me close this, so when I'm down here, let's say I'm looking at a foreground video, um, this one has sound, so right click, select inspector, formerly media properties, and I go in here, and let's say I don't want it this entire length, I want it to stop right there but I don't know exactly when I want it to stop. So what I can do is I can preview it here, so you can probably hear that in my mic, the sound, and then when I get it to wherever I want to, you know, I could set the output if I wanted to. And that didn't go into the house, that only went to my speakers here at my desk. So that's a handy little trick to do. Now, the video itself, so this property is the uh, inspector setting that I set up is only for this dialog, only for this pop-up when I'm setting in and out points, when I'm checking effects, whatever. If I wanted to send the audio from this file itself when it actually plays during a presentation to somewhere different, that's done up here. So I can uh, do the routing. I can change the input-output. Notice that it has the default routing of audio channel 1 going to both 1 and 2 and audio channel 2 going to 3 and 4. So I can click here and this actually isn't the default uh, routing. That is. So um, that's probably the way that I'd want to do it if my channels 1 and 2 were set to go out to the house and out to um, the recording and the um, out to both the recording and or the live stream. So that's probably the way that I would want to do it, but I just have a lot of freedom here and by default it's set to 1 and 2 right there which you can see right here. You don't even need to go into channel routing for that. So that is how to do that. If you like this content, you'd probably like uh, the ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course, which is a $29 value, but I know a guy. Okay, I'm the guy. I know a guy, yeah, myself, and so I'm going to give it to you free if you want it. Just go to TDM dot fyi slash pro seven quick and you can put in your email address and name there and i'll just uh, uh, create a login for you and you have access to that course to watch as many times as you need to get a little quick start on pro seven until next time this is paul allen clifford from trinity digital media.com and churchtechu.com reminding you to go out and change eternity